Hello, my name is Sven Ringling. I'm director of the German office at Adessa Group, where my role and my passion is to drive digital HR for our customers across EMEA using sub success factors, sub HCM, and Qualtrics employee experience. Today, I want to show you a very pragmatic approach to combine experience data from Qualtrics with operational HR data from success factors to leverage powerful reporting and insights. Let's start with your old data, which you will keep in success factors or SAP HCM. This is your basic employee data, like name and email address, organizational data like department and reporting hierarchy, and further employee data, anything that you want to use in your analysis of experience data later on. We can load this data into Qualtrics quite easily once you understand how the data works on both systems. It's usually used to secure file transfers. They can be automated. They can be using an SFTP site or other technologies. Then you add X data in Qualtrics basically by running your employee survey to collect experience data. That's the main part of the exercise, and it would obviously take a couple of weeks to make sure that all of your employees will be able to respond to the survey. And then you have all you need. You have your X data and the selected O data in the same system inside the Qualtrics platform, and you can use the Qualtrics tools like Statistics IQ, Text IQ for intelligent text analysis, and the dashboards to visualize your data. I now want to take you through a very brief process to show you how to can launch your survey, how a survey is filled in, and eventually, and most notably, look at the dashboard and do some interesting analytics. So here we are inside our Qualtrics platform. And here's the proof that I've uploaded 51 participants, employees from my SuccessFactors sandbox instance. That's the basic data like name and email address. If you look in the detail, you can see that we have added some metadata, as it's called in Qualtrics, based on the success factors employee central data. We used age groups, ethnic origin, and gender. Further proof for the data load from success factors, we also have the org hierarchies. We have the reporting hierarchy, which is based on the individual reporting structure. But we also have an org level view where we can see business units, departments, and so on. Both will be quite useful later in the analysis because we might want to compare uh, experience data results for different departments. And most notably, we will want to share dashboards to line managers so they can actually see what happens in their department and take appropriate actions. But first, we have to have our X data. I will now show you how one participant takes the survey based from the survey invite I have in this email. Just click the link, take survey. Usually surveys start with a little welcome note, but we'll keep it short here. Just go to the survey itself. Some of you may recognize that the questions are aligned to the Gallup 12-point survey with some further questions thrown in. So the first one is about uh, the employees role in the organization and my example here is quite happy with that so it's all agree or strongly agree with the statements go to the next one where it's about relationships inside the organizations again i give mostly positive answers here And then the last set in this uh, matrix type of questions is about the personal development and growth opportunities. Uh, again, I want to give a set of positive answers. So quite a happy and engaged employee. And then we get to what we usually call a net promoter score. So we want to know whether the employee would actually recommend us as an employer to family and friends. So not surprisingly, this employee would say, yes, I'm 90% likely to do this. And now clicking next, because he is a net promoter, we basically ask him how he would describe the company to their friends and family. 
had he chosen a lower value, um, seven or eight or lower, basically, then we would ask him about how we can improve. So the survey doesn't have to take the same path for every participant. We can make choices depending on answers given at any point in the survey. So, and that's it. So quite a short and sweet survey. I submit and then get a little thank you note. And I've also chosen to design the survey so the employee can actually review their answers again and even download them as a PDF. So now assuming not just this one employee, but all the other 50 delegates have also submitted their results. At this point, let's go right into the dashboard. So this is the one dashboard I designed. It's got four pages. The one I call top data, that's what I want to look at first and foremost. The one piece of information you might usually be interested most in is the net promoter score. So we have 51% uh, of positive answers here, which is an okay result. Obviously there's room for improvement. Um, then here we see um, from a diversity point of view how our participants set is made up. So for ethnic origin, I used a simplified version of the UK classification. Uh, you can use whatever is uh, appropriate in, in your organization. A very interesting widget uh, used in this dashboard is to show the three best and worst answers in the survey. And the three best, they're actually quite good because uh, the two best ones, they have 100% positive answers, and then number three, close to 100%. However, if I look at the impact column, and this is how in our survey, each question actually statistically impacts the net promoter score, they are not really that important. And if I look at the bottom three questions, where the positive answers are between 44 and 34 percent, I see that they're actually much more important in terms of driving my net promoter score. So if this is one of my KPIs to improve, then I am a little bit in trouble. This last column here where I can see the add sign, this is for the action planning. Without going into detail now what it actually means, I think on these three we need to take action. So I just basically put a reminder in here for my action panel later. Now, so far we've only really looked at the experience data and the O data in isolation, but we can combine it with a simple use of filters. So if I look at the development of my net promoter score, I use the gender filter, um, look at male responses first, and see, I have a really good net promoter score. That already lets us suspect what happens when I look at female only, and then it's really going down to a dismal 19% of um, net promoters. That's not good. Um, let's do the same for ethnic origin. Let's maybe look at uh, what happens if I focus on Asian colleagues then the net promoter score goes down from 50 to 40 percent. Um, it's still not a disaster, but not great. And now what do you think what happens if I combine and say, how do female Asian colleagues uh, see the company? And that looks very dismal because there's not a single net promoter uh, in this group. So I think the job is quite obvious here. We have a real inclusion problem in this organization if the data is right. There's certainly some more uh, digging to be done. So I'm just going back to uh, all answers. Um, but yeah, at least we know now. So there's a, a task ahead. Uh, we definitely need to work on uh, inclusion measures in this organization to give a bit of flavor. We also use word clouds, analyze the verbal feedback. And you remember when I took the survey, uh, my participant was actually a promoter. 
And these are the words that the promoters uh, gave in that question. So there is about uh, life balance, it's about con compensation, it's about team. So it gives you a bit of an idea. And then the non-promoters have uh, been asked the question how we could possibly improve. There's a lot about uh, development, opportunity, career, learning. You might also already have an idea that our non-promoters, which are primarily female and non-white colleagues, uh, are lacking development or career opportunities. Obviously, that's um, not yet a full analysis, but again, it gives you a good idea where to dig further. Finally, a quick look at the actions dashboard. It's not the most visually exciting part of the dashboard, but it's probably the most important part of the survey process because there's nothing worth than taking a survey, which means you pretend to listen to your employee, and then there is no visible action to be taken, no feedback loop back to the workforce. Then it's actually better not to ask. Because this, otherwise, it's like your spouse asking you what you want for lunch every day, but always cooking something completely different. So this was just a, a quick, simple example um, how you can combine the power of experience data and operational HR data just with your success factors or SAP HCM system you already have in place and a Quadrix solution without actually needing any advanced uh, magic in analytics tools like SubAnalytics sub Cloud. Say, if today you have success factors in place, you don't have Qualtrics in place yet, and in three months' time after the survey has been launched and analyzed, you can share this kind of insights uh, with your executive board. If you want to learn more, please reach out to us. Here is my contact data. My name is Sven Ringling. My email address is sven.ringling at adessa-group.com or just visit our website at www.adessa-group.com. Thank you very much for watching.